I want to talk to you about a key ingredient to a happy life. Every smart man realizes that a happy wife is the only way to really have a happy life. And if you forget that, forget any hope of lasting happiness this side of heaven. When a man finds a good wife, he has truly found a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. Well, boys, you each did real fine. And now, I have a universal truth about marriage. Number one, the first thing is, you need to learn that every house runs on a point system. <laughs> and number two is, the women get to keep the points. The quicker you figure this out, the sooner you're going to find marital bliss. It works like this. If you take the garbage out, you get brownie points. If you take it out without being reminded, you get extra points. If she has to nag you two or three times before you finally do it, then you lose points. It's real important that you remember this because your wife is not the only one who keeps points. God keeps records too. Now, I know that Christianity emphasizes that through Christ, God wipes our slate clean. Still, our actions do matter. Now, obviously, salvation is exclusively dependent on the finished work of Jesus at the cross. But we will still do well to remember that in spite of our confession of faith, God will even hold us accountable for our loose lips. Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Now, Caleb, you're a good boy. Jennifer is <laughs> pregnant, real pregnant. Now listen to me, son. If she buys a bright yellow dress and asks you how it looks, I don't care if people are stopping her on the corner yelling, taxi! <laughs> Pal, you better just think before you speak. If she asks, how does my dress look? You say, ooh, mama, you a fox! <laughs> Come on, you gotta try that now. <laughs> ooh, ooh, mama, mama you, you a fox! fox. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's real good. God made her perfect for you. Appreciate her. All of her. <laughs> Boys, listen carefully. You need points to get through life or things are just not good. If there's a guy job around the house like replacing a light switch, just count it all joy. If she finds a leaky pipe, praise God. You know, while you can still rack up the allotted points, do what you need to do. If, if she has a problem with the car, well, you could lose points for weeks if, you know, she stalls out at the wrong time. Fix the car. <laughs> you know, protect your wife, protect your points. Now, here's another unchanging rule. Nobody knows how the points are calculated. <laughs> the only thing we know for sure is that she does all the adding and she does all the subtracting. It's easier to make new points than it will ever be to go back and get lost points. When they're gone, they're gone. Forget them. Get back to work. <laughs> now, this system is quite a mystery, although there are clear signs. No need to go into the details. Every married man knows just what, exactly what I'm talking about. Now, don't misunderstand any of this. You can still wear the pants in your home, and you should get the last word in every argument. Yes, dear, works in most instances. And, if, you know, if that fails, try I'm sorry. <laughs> David and I were talking about a wedding they had here recently, and I remember his wise counsel. He said, carefully choose the hills you're willing to die for. Well, soldier, don't dump in your own mess kit and never mount a military campaign in your home. Life is tough. Love doesn't need to be that way. There's a time for battles. There's a time for spiritual warfare. And there's a time to engage the enemy. But never confuse your family with the enemy. The enemy is not sleeping in your bed. And if you treat each other right, your bed should be reserved for heaven because your battle is in the world and the world is going to hell all around you. Now, I want each of you to, to listen to me. In the world, you'll have real battles, but God and your wife will help you. A godly woman will stand by your side, win or lose. She'll pray when hope is gone. She'll comfort you when you're too weak to care. And she'll be the breath of life when despair has stolen your will to believe. If you love your wife as Christ loved the church, the rest will be easy. He commands you to be willing to give your life for her, so God knows it shouldn't matter if she gets the TV remote from time to time. If you show her a Christ-like devotion, she'll entrust you with her love, and this is her greatest gift. 
Help her know that she's safe in your care, and I promise you, she'll help you win the real battles of life. And the fact is that in all likelihood, you won't be able to win without her. That's why God gave her to you. You need her. She'll be your strongest ally when it counts, and if you cultivate your love and faith, no power in hell will ever be able to divide you, defeat you, or discourage you into quitting. As sons and daughters, you are successful. Every child wants to hear that from their father. Some never get to hear it. Well, I want you to know that I'm very, very thankful to be your dad. Because of a loving God and a wonderful wife, I'm blessed to celebrate fatherhood with children who make me proud and happy. The Bible says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with, with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Like Moses, may you live to be 120. It's important to me that you know you've only brought happiness and honor to our home. You have obeyed the Lord in this commandment. And my prayer is that you'll fulfill the rest of the verse. Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Boys, do that, and you'll be great fathers. And you'll provide a service that God's people in this world desperately needs. You'll become examples for your sons to follow. So they'll treat your future daughters-in-law in a godly manner. And you'll set a standard that your daughters will seek in a husband. If you treat your wives right, It'll show your little girls that how good men ought to act. This will help your daughters avoid bad men who'll break her heart. Now, fellas, I've tried never to preach to you when you lived in my home. Examples are better than exegesis, and a good home is more important than a good homily. Well, you don't live with me anymore, but I'm just not quite done raising you. So I'm going to give you the fastest six-point sermon you'll ever hear to help you be successful husbands and fathers. So... F is not for flowers, but by all means, buy her flowers. F is for faithful. At all costs, be faithful. Now, girls love flowers, but there aren't enough petals in the White House Rose Garden to cover the stench of moral failure. A is for attentive. Listen to her. Spend time with her. You'll never figure out what she needs if you're not attentive. Open doors. Hug her. Tell her you love her every night. Listen to her and be a gentleman. In Yiddish, we say, be a mensch. If you want to live with a godly lady, you'd best be a godly gentleman. T is for tender. The most manly trait a husband can show his wife is tenderness. And someday when you need her most, you'll find a tender woman by your side, giving you the strength you need to face the giants in your life with quiet courage and bold faith. H is for humble. All of us realize that God uses humble servants. What some men overlook is that, you know, wives are often the grinding wheels that God uses, they're ordained to the Lord to hone down our proud edges that would otherwise render us useless in His sight. E is for expect. You'd better expect to put in a lot of effort to achieve a good marriage. But you should expect God's best, expect God's blessings. Expect God's supernatural ability to kick in as you diligently apply your natural abilities to accomplish his goals. And remember, expect fruitfulness. We do. <laughs> we want <laughs> babies. And that brings me to my conclusion. R is for romance. Never allow the wonder of love to dissipate. Nurture romance and love will prosper. When love prospers in a marriage, life itself becomes holy, and holiness is what God requires of his people. Be holy, for I am holy. So girls, let me ask you something. Are these rascals of ours treating you, are they treating you right? Are they being good to you? Will you help them be the fathers that God desires them to be? You know, I have a theory. I think the smartest wives are the ones who find the little boy that lives inside their man. Keep that little boy alive because little boys know how to dream. It's little boys who rejoice with abandon and the little boys can enlist a childlike faith to move God into action. God is love. My prayer is that our God of love will fill your lives with love. In the meantime, live, love, and enjoy each other this Father's Day and every day. That's why we invited you here to Lockhart Gables. This is a place for romance. This is a place for love. 
This is a place for husbands and wives without the kids, so I guess somebody has got to leave. How about Zadie and Grammy just borrowing the kids and getting out of here? See y'all. <sighs> I hope your system tolerated that well and some of it sticks. Please come back next time for a new edition of Crosstalk. There's stuff to evaluate, analyze, and internalize. But it all comes down to this. Jesus is Lord and evil is such a nice Jewish boy. <laughs> Until next time, Shalom.